When two or more waves are traveling in the same exact region and space at the same exact moment in time, those waves will combine in such a way to form a more complex wave that is commonly known as a composite wave. Now, this process of the waves combining is known as wave interference. Now, there are two main types of wave interference that we're going to discuss. We're going to examine destructive interference as well as constructive interference. But before we get into these types of interference, let's discuss, let's recall the principle of superposition. So, in a previous lecture, we discussed this principle known as superposition of waves. And this principle essentially gives us a way to add our waves to create the composite wave. It basically tells us that if we want to create the composite wave, we have to take the algebraic sum of the displacements of each wave at every single moment in time. And that's exactly what we're going to do when we're going to examine destructive and constructive interference. So let's begin with destructive interference. Let's look at diagram A. So, in diagram A, we essentially have a thin long cord. On the left side of our cord, we have one wave impulse that is right side up. And on the right side of our thin long cord, we have a second impulse that is inverted compared to our first impulse. Now, let's say that the maximum displacement, our amplitude of this impulse is A, and the amplitude of this impulse is negative A. So they have the same exact magnitude of amplitude, but they point in different directions. What exactly will happen when these two waves will meet in the middle, when they will overlap? Well, when they will overlap, because they have the same exact magnitude of displacement but opposite signs, destructive interference will take place and they will essentially cancel one another out and we'll see the following flat region in the middle. So, two wave pulses, one right side up and the second inverted meet at the middle of our cord. If they have opposite displacement, displacements at each region in the wave, destructive interference will take place as shown in part B. They will cancel one another out. Now, we must recall an important part of the principle of superposition. It basically states that the waves are independent of one another. What that basically means, after our destructive interference takes place, this wave will continue to move in the same exact direction as it was moving before our interference took place. And this wave will continue moving to the right in the same exact manner as shown in part C. So even though for some given moment they overlap and they destruct, they cancel each other out, after that takes place, they will continue moving in the same exact direction as before the destructive interference took place. So now let's talk about constructive interference. What exactly is constructive interference? Well, in many different ways, it's the opposite of destructive interference, where in destructive interference, the two waves cancel one another out. In constructive interference, they add to create a larger amplitude wave. So at the instant that the two waves overlap, they produce a resultant displacement that is greater than the displacement of either of our individual waves. So let's look at diagram A. Let's suppose that we have the same exact chord, but now we have two wave impulses that are found on the same exact side of the x-axis and they're traveling in opposite directions. So eventually they will meet and according to the principle of superposition to create our composite wave we simply add up our amplitudes and we get the following resultant composite wave.
Now, in the same exact way, as in destructive interference, our two waves will continue moving onward after destructive interference took place. In constructive interference, after they create the composite wave, they will continue moving in opposite directions as shown in part C. Now, these examples are examples of one and two dimensional waves. What about three-dimensional waves. So let's examine spherical waves that are produced when, for example, a rock is dropped into the water. So let's suppose we drop two rocks at the same exact time from the same exact height. And when they hit the water, they will produce spherical waves that will travel outward in all possible directions. So, rock number one will produce the following blue waves and rock number two will produce the following green waves. Now, recall that these regions, our blue regions and the green regions, represent the crests of our waves. And the in-between regions are known as the troughs, in the same way that this is the crest and this is our trough. Now notice when the crest meets the trough and if their amplitudes are the same but opposite in sign, destructive interference will take place. And in the same exact way, when our crest is found directly over our trough, so the blue region is found in between our green region, that's exactly where our crest meet the trough and in this point destructive interference takes place and this is also known as out of phase wave so these two waves are out of phase and destructive interference takes place now what about if we examine the regions where the crest meets the crest so we saw that if the crest meets the crest they will add up to create a larger resultant composite wave and constructive interference will take place. In the same exact way, when the crest meet the crest, we have constructive interference taking place. And this only takes place when the two crests are exactly in phase. So in phase means constructive interference and out of phase means destructive interference.